I'm Brian Stevens. I'm in charge of emerging technologies at Sound. I'm also a radiation physicist, which doesn't sound all that useful to anybody, but um, radiation's interaction with biological matter, that's my expertise. So I'll talk to you a little bit about scattering and answer any questions about the technology and about the, the, the actual science of CT. Um, on the phone with us, joining us from San Luis Rey uh, Equine Hospital is Dr. Nick Huggins, board of surgeon, and uh, Dr. Corinne Potenza, the co-owner of San Luis Rey. Say hi, Dr. Nick. Hi, everybody. There you go. And Kurt Selberg, board of radiologist at, uh, at CSU, and he's gonna go through some pathologies, or some, some cases to show you some cool pathologies and cool anatomies. Um, this is a video that we created uh, a couple weeks ago at St. Louis Ray Equine, where they have a body time here. You can see it, we actually, we actually have the body time here. Um, and better explained by Dr. Pretenz and Dr. Huggins, because they've had it for uh, since 2015, and he'll explain it all here. So I'm gonna play this, and then we'll talk about questions, and then we'll talk about some cases. So I'm gonna play this. Dr. Nick Huggins of San Luis Rey Equine Hospital. I'm a board certified equine surgeon. Did my training at University of California, Davis. I'm Dr. Corinne Potenza of San Luis Rey Equine Hospital. My areas of interest are elective equine surgery, specifically relating to upper airway surgery, orthopedic surgery, and diagnostic imaging, especially computed tomography. We tailor to a lot of sport horses and race horses, and some backyard horses as well. We, as young business owners, are always trying to be innovative and incorporating the body tom was one way for us to do that. We installed and incorporated the body tom into our clinic in September of 2015. We found that there was a strong need for computed tomography uh, relating specifically to imaging of the head, neck, and distal extremities. It's been a huge, um, component of our practice since this time. We had a lot of sports medicine cases that we wanted to be able to CT because we had limitations with other modalities. Uh, we wanted to be able to use it for our fractures for pre-surgical planning and we get a lot of neurologic cases and we knew that the CT would be able to provide us information on pathologies in the cervical spine that we wouldn't be able to see with our more traditional myelograms and radiographs. We specifically incorporated the body tom system because it is a freely moving gantry. This allowed us to install a computed tomography system into a fairly small workspace without having to modify our facility. The maneuverability of the body tom is exceptional. I can move it myself, it's very easy. We have it in a room where there's three different openings and we can move the CT depending on which anatomical structure we need to scan, whether it's the head or the neck or a distal extremity one person can manipulate it. So when it's up on its casters, the radius turn is very small, so it can pivot uh, to swivel around. And then the driving capability when it's down on the tracks also allows great maneuverability within a small space. We've been very fortunate to be able to utilize the custom radiolucent CT table from STI. It's really helped us with our positioning, especially with the standing head CTs and our distal limb uh, sports medicine cases positioning them in the CT. The body tom itself is a lead line machine which allowed us to not have to do any major modifications to the room. Uh, it simply charges with basic uh, electrical outlet and we don't have to have a room that's already lead lined uh, and the workstation itself has a uh, protective background for the personnel. The body tom has really been very beneficial for this practice with our sports medicine cases. Um, we put a lot of horses, distal extremities through there and have seen a lot of benefits uh, both for soft tissue and for bone. And we're picking up on things that we're not able to see following our routine lameness exams and blocks, especially after radiographs that we're finding later when we CT the horse. This will include feet, anything else on the distal extremity, can bones, suspensories. We can get up to the carpus, hocks. Um, and in some patients we can do their stifles. With our distal extremity uh, cases, we like to use arterial contrast to enhance the soft tissue imaging. Um, it really accentuates the lesions for us, especially the acute lesions, but we've been really pleased with the quality of imaging to both the soft tissue structures and the bone surfaces. One of our favorite uses of the CT in our sports medicine practice is the proximal suspensory. 
Uh, it gives us the best of both worlds with the arterial contrast. Cervical spine, we're one of the first clinics in the world to be able to image the cervical spine successfully all the way from C1 to C7 slash T1. With the diagnostic imaging being high quality, we can see images all the way back that show us a unique pathology. So we're able to see bone cysts, spinal cord compression, enlargement of the cervical facets, especially if there's a unilateral component. Um, the majority of the cervical spine pathology has already been shown to be in the caudal cervical spine. So being able to uniquely see in 3D back at that, that level has been uh, a huge push for the clinic as well as for an advancement for spinal imaging in horses. With our standing head CTs, the uh, skull imaging is extremely high quality, so we're able to see very detailed imaging of the dental structures, the sinuses, and then especially when we have other pathologies such as THO or temporal hyoid osteoarthropathy cases, uh, we're able to uniquely see those types of uh, incidents as well. In addition, we've had some very unique cases where we have either internal ear disease without um, stylohyoid disease or in combination and unilateral or bilateral. The ability to see that or with head trauma, uh, we're able to image those cases. We've also successfully imaged a lot of head trauma cases with basosphenoid fractures and we've successfully done those under standing sedation. So even if we have a patient that has suffered head trauma, the majority of them can be imaged under standing sedation without the need for general anesthesia. Performing standing head CTs has uh, allowed us to basically eliminate taking x-rays in our practice of skulls. The procedure takes about 10 to 15 minutes from start to finish. The actual scan itself takes somewhere between 20 and 30 seconds. For the orthopedics, um, fractures, we're able to see all of the issues immediately before going into surgery. So during preparation, we're able to view where the issue is, if it was more or less than we thought on the x-rays and it gives us a high degree of confidence going in for fracture repair. Since installing the body tom, we use it on average probably two to three times a week. And since the caseload's grown, we've used it up to three to five times per week. The breakdown of cases is variable. Um, it's probably about 30% um, uh, split between orthopedic imaging, cervical spine imaging, and the standing hand. The software interface has been very easy to use. It's very easy for everybody to train on. As far as technical staff, it's very user friendly and it's simple for the clinicians to learn and simple for the technical staff to learn. The patient input data is very basic. It connects with our PAC software seamlessly. Uh, we have the ability to view the images as they're acquired and then we can do any degree of post acquisition reconstruction on the images. So the BodyTom software has very good 2D, 3D, and multi-planar reconstruct imaging. So we're able to do that at the time or immediately after acquisition. And then we're able to post-process the images as well if there's a preference prior to sending those uh, to a radiologist or uh, to another PAX viewing software. When they installed the body tom, they provided um, on-site technical training. And during that time, we went through everything from moving the machine, using the software, how it works. They were extremely good to tailoring it to our existing knowledge base. Samsung Neurologica has been very supportive of uh, our unit being installed here at the veterinary facility. The company support has been phenomenal. So they're able to help us with all technical issues on site and off. They're able to remote log in to our workstation and then they can do software updates. They can look and do any troubleshooting that is required. In addition, their on-site service has been amazing. Uh, their service technicians have been phenomenal and their response time is very rapid. The body tom is an expensive piece of equipment for a practice owner. However, we've found that it's allowed us to be innovative and provide higher quality of care to our patients. We're receiving a lot of referrals for this particular uh, diagnostic modality, and it's been able to cover its own expenses, not only from the scans themselves, but for the follow-up procedures. 
the expense of the body tom is not necessarily justified just by the cost of the scans themselves, but it is easily offset by the procedures that are generated from the diagnostic imaging that we can do, especially with the wide range of diagnostic imaging that it has opened up for us. So it creates a lot of open doors, it generates a lot more work, and allows a, a higher revenue stream than just the charging for the imaging itself. We've been really pleased with the caliber and quality of imaging the CT scanner has provided our sports medicine cases. It has also allowed our practice uh, basically the, the level of medicine to increase and allow us to come to a new higher level or standard of care.